So let's talk a little bit about some of your creations. And one in particular is the book that you recently put out of a few essays that you've written over the last couple of years on fatherhood. Uh, mm. It's called, oh, wait, what is the book called again? Shit, I just blanked on it. It's cool. It's called Your Father, the Hip Hop Head. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, I read it last night and then I read it again this morning and was like, what I love is like, yeah, it's something you can read probably in an hour, hour and a half. And mm. it's a really honest reflection. Like you really like lay things on the line. And I just want to ask, is it not, I mean, it's obviously scary to do that, but how do you actually go through that process of putting it down on paper, editing it, refining it, sending it out to other people? Because these were some of them were pieces that you submitted to other places. Yeah. Some of it got printed, some of it didn't. And that whole process of knowing that it's going to be read by other people, like, is it like, is there any tension in your stomach? Like, you know, be before Definitely. it goes to print, before it gets read? Cause yeah, this is some really honest stuff. Yeah. So first of all, like, thank you for reading the book, man. Yeah. I mean, there's always that tension. Like I think, Cause part, you know, I I think I have to be honest with myself as well. Like part of this, like really is like sort of like emotional pornography. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, man. It's just like, literally like, okay, cool. Like, here's what I think. Here's some of the worst impulses I've ever had. And so I think when people ask what the book is about, I always say the book is about fatherhood, but you know, it's not necessarily about my son. Cause that's the one thing I wanted to avoid doing. I didn't want my son to turn 18 and suddenly there's this like entire book that speaks specifically about him. And that's why if you read the pieces, like I talk about mostly my anxiety about parenthood, uh, some of the music I play around my son and stuff like that. There's only one piece that's specifically addressed to him. And it's the last one, yeah. um, for Colored Boys. But yeah, I mean, it's terrifying, man. Like, cause <laughs> I remember when I wrote, I think the, the, the piece like that scared me the most was the last one, the one, you know, that's sort of addressed to my son. Yeah. Cause I'm obviously talking about some personal stuff, like, you know, talking about uh, my time in a psychiatric clinic, you know, talking about just how anxious I was before he was born. And yeah, I think the only reason I write like that is, so I grew up like sort of, I think between 18 and 24, between the time I was 18 and 24 was kind of like, you know, the golden age of the personal essay. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like for real. Like you read like really, really like engrossing personal essays. There's this one I read like in 2015, I think. Yeah, some dude was talking about was talking about his weight gain and, you know, how he he, he deliberately put on weight. For no other reason than he thought, you know, he looked better, like um, when he was what most people would classify as fat. And, you know, the other the other pieces of literature I've read, like David Carr's Night of the Gun. David Carr was like a really good uh, seminal journal journalist, like uh, wrote for the New York Times. But he used to do crack when he was like, um, oh. yeah, when he was like um, in his 20s. And he only stopped because he became a father. And so when he wrote this book, you know, he kind of wrote it as, you know, sort of like investigating the darkest point in his life because there was a lot he didn't remember. So I think like stuff like that influences the the type of writing I, I do because, you know, th there are quite a few people who have like maybe a particular, you know, maybe you have a guy who studied politics and is a political journalist or someone who studied finance and they're a finance journalist. You know, I, I, I just studied journalism. You know what I mean? So yeah, you just read. Yeah. It's not like I'm the smartest dude out there. Like my two, my biggest interest is hip hop and outside of hip hop, the most important thing for me is the fact that I have a son. So, you know, I'm always looking for ways to interrogate that. Yeah. And you do it really well, like within the book. And I love that essay that you have about the music that you play in the car, because it is one of those things that, I mean, as you get older, you start to obviously interrogate the music you listen to a bit more. And like, you can understand why you might listen to like early Tyler, the creator or something, you know, when that's coming out, you know, because it's mm. anti-authority and this and that. But once you have a kid, you can kind of also figure why you wouldn't necessarily want them listening to, you know, certain lyrics from exactly. some of your favorite people. Yeah, I think for me, like most of the, like it's weird, most of what I learned was from hip hop, like sort of like in adolescence, 
um, yeah. sort of so my, my conception of religion, like when you think of like the Wu-Tang and the five percenters and the black Israelites and stuff like that, that's sort of like how I sort of, you know, sort of interrogated religion. Okay. And, and so, so it's you crazy. dead prayers at all? Yes. Yes. I love dead prayers. Well, I, I used to, I mean, let's get free. I think when I was like 17 and 18 was like on heavy yeah, rotation. It was an awkward album for a white dude to listen to, but I listened to it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were pretty sick. Like, so, like, Dead Prayers, Immortal Technique, those guys. Yeah. But, I mean, like you said as well, I like the example you made of Tyler, the Creator. So, I used to, I think I was, like, in first year when Tyler, the Creator became a thing, like, 20, 2011, 2011, 2012. And it was obviously, like, anti, you know, anti-authority. You listen to these guys. And you know, but it's but it's something yeah, I could it's never punk as fuck. Yeah, but it's stuff you could never listen to now, like because you know, um, especially Tyler. You know hey. what I mean? Because he's very cavalier about rape. You know, sort yeah, of exactly. like dismembering people. You know, sort of like used the f word like quite a lot. Like he was quite homophobic. So yeah, I mean, it's just with that piece you're talking about, the one where you know the, the music I I I play for my son. I remember I was driving him to daycare one day. And I was playing like um, Shaq West, like uh, Mo Bamba, like I got hoes calling. And I remember at some point, you know, because he was playing with his toy and then, you know, he started vibing to the music. And I thought, OK, Cooper, what are we actually listening to? You know what I mean? He might not yeah. necessarily understand what it means at the time. But, you know, I think I had I have a bigger responsibility, like if he's going to listen to hip hop. It's just, yeah, I just want to be cautious of how the music I play might influence like his language, you know, and how he maneuvers the world. So the piece essentially was talking about how I just became a bit more deliberate, um, you know, maybe play stuff like from the roots. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, I just, I, I just want to be conscious of what I play around my son. It's kind of like the other side of the coin of Bitch Bad by Lupe Fiasco. Yeah. Like, yeah, like that's kind of what I was getting out of when I was reading that. So it was like, well, yeah, it was just like, this reminds me of that. But it's like, I think it's, it's just one of those, like, also what I enjoyed that, like, that comes throughout the pieces, your, because it's not actually just a book about fatherhood. I think, mm -hmm. I mean, you're kind of open about it. It's a book about black boyhood as well. And what that yeah, means, because yeah, yeah. it, you interrogate your own upbringing. Yeah. No man, so 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 that piece you talk about, like the one about black boyhood, it's it's literally called Black Boy. So, I mean, for the book is literally like essentially, I take you know a song and 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 that's what I'd name the, you know, um, I'd name a chapter and I'd use the song as an entry point to discuss you know something else. So like that essay you're talking about about black boyhood, it's called Black Boy. And I'm sort of paralleling Capadonna's Black Boy with Richard Wright's memoir of the same name. And yeah, it starts with, you know, how me and my twin brother almost burnt the house down when we were like 16. <laughs> By the way, relatable as fuck. Like, <laughs> man. Yeah, that was some stupid, stupid shit. So literally we just, you know, we'd come back from school and we'd just literally start burning crap. But one day we almost burnt the house down. But yeah. that's how... That's how Richard Wright's black boy starts. Like he literally, but he burns the family home. And so, you know, what I found crazy about, you know, black boy in particular, like Richard Wright's book is how, is the use of the word boy. You know what I mean? It's always, yeah. so it's always something he's escaping from when he was a kid. You know what I mean? Um, you know, he was a boy, but he was six years old. And, you know, th there's this chapter where he talks about how he was an alcoholic when he was six years old, because literally the men in his neighborhood were like, okay, cool, but you're not a boy, you're a man. You know what I mean? Come chill with men, have some liquor, go feel up on some women. And then when he turned 21, he was kind of like, um, he was a cleaner at a post office. And he says like the white people, there would never refer to him as a man. They always called him a boy. If he mopped somewhere, they'd deliberately step over it so he'd have to mop again. And I thought it was really cool like to to sort of use you know, that to discuss like what boyhood means, it's just sort of something you're always trying to run away from. And it's, you know, at some point, you know, the world actively tells you to run away from the idea of being a boy. Yeah. So it's just, I, I just wanted to interrogate what being sort of like a black boy means, what black boyhood means. And then I sort of like um, use Capadonna as a, 
as a shoehorn because yeah i think one they the song's called black boy for one so it was an obvious one but i think mm-hmm. i like how when you listen to the first verse like you know it's very bravado it's very you know it's a very it's a certain kind of like masculinity that he's talking about and it's a masculinity i aspire to at some point you know kind of like being gaudy but it's obviously you know something that the older i became the more i realized okay cool maybe i don't want to be like this at all um so yeah i think i was rambling towards the end but that's essentially what the essay is about <laughs>